This is topic number 16, how did the French Revolution impact America? We're going to be talking about Latin America, peninsulares, Creoles, mestizos, and mulattoes, what happened in Venezuela with Simon Bolivar, his attendance at Napoleon's coronation, and how he revolted against Spain. And then we'll talk about Mexico, Miguel Hidalgo, and Mexican independence. So, um, the first thing we need to talk about is peninsulares. Peninsulares are men who had been born in Spain. In colonial society, these were the only people who could hold political office in Spain. Nobody else could do it. You had to have been born in Spain, and peninsularities were used to keep the loyalty of colonial leaders because they were born in Spain, and if they were born in Latin America, they could never hold political office. Um, the next group that we need to talk about is Creoles. Creoles were born in Latin America, and here's a map of Latin America. Everything south of Panama, the Colombia, Ecuador, Venezuela. This is a French map just to give you an idea. Um, and they could not hold political office. The reason it's a French map is Creole is actually a French word. So Creoles were people whose mother and father were born in Spain, but they were born themselves in Latin America. They couldn't rise to power politically, uh, but they could rise to power in the military. So they could be a general, a colonel, or a lieutenant, but never a leader. And they're actually the ones who spearhead the independence movement in Latin America. Spearhead means they led. When you're the spearhead, you're the tip of the spear, you're the one who goes first. So they lead the independence movement in Latin America from Spain. And in Uruguay, Argentina, Chile, Paraguay, Bolivia, Peru, Ecuador, Colombia, Venezuela, these countries will all revolt from Spain. Brazil revolts from Portugal. And these three little countries, they actually revolt from France. So, uh, mestizos, that's another term you're going to need to know for the quiz. Mestizos were persons of mixed European and Indian ancestry. Usually their father was European and their mother was Indian. Uh, mulattoes were persons of mixed European and African ancestry. Usually their father was European and their mother was an African-American slave or an African and brought to Latin America and was a slave. And the way Latin American society was divided, you had peninsulares, they were at the very top, they hold all the political power. Creoles worked for them, uh, they were born in Latin America, but they were Spanish of descent. Below the Creoles were mestizos, below the mulattoes, uh, below the mestizos were the mulattoes, below the mulattoes were the slaves, and below the slaves were the Indians. And the farther you went down, the more there were. There was a lot more mestizos and mulattoes and creoles than peninsulares. So, um, what happens is this guy right here, he is a very famous creole. His name is Simon Bolivar. He was a creole. And uh, during the Napoleonic Wars, he was actually traveling around the world. He visited the United States in 1807. He visited England in 1810. And he actually brought uh, influence back from those two places to the country that he liberates, Venezuela. Um, and the place that was most influential on him was France. Bolivar was actually at the coronation of Napoleon. And at the time, France did something new. France was nationalistic or they were believed in nationalism. And this was a new concept. Nationalism means pride in one's country. And what that meant was that people in France were no longer fighting for the French king because they had beheaded the king. They were fighting for the country of France. And nationalism spreads throughout Europe because of the Peninsular War. Remember, Spain was being invaded by Napoleon to get to Portugal. And because he deposed the Spanish king, the Spanish guerrillas were no longer fighting for the Spanish king. They were fighting for the pride of Spain. And this concept of nationalism, pride in your country, when Bolivar went there, he kind of took it back. And it motivated him to fight for independence in his country. Because as the Peninsular War got more and more violent, people in Latin America were willing to revolt against Spain that was being controlled by France. And that's actually what happens. So at the end of the war, this nationalistic feeling still exists in Latin America. And Bolivar actually defeats the Spanish army in Venezuela in 1819. And he tries to run the country, and he's unsuccessful. And in fact, the entire continent of Latin America kind of descends into chaos. And he has a very famous quote, which will be on your quiz. It says, those who worked for South America independence have plowed the sea. 
And what that means is when you plow something with a farm, you're running a piece of metal through the dirt to open it up so you can plant the seeds. Now when you plow the seed, it never works because the water just rushes back in. So he says anybody who's worked for the independence of South America has been uh, wasting their time because no matter what you do, they'll always go back to a strong ruler. And we're seeing a lot of that today with the events in South America. Now, this guy will also be under exam. His name is Miguel Hidalgo. Miguel Hidalgo was poor but very well educated. And he is very famous for the cry of Dolores. He had a cry of rebellion against the Spanish. And he organized an army of mestizos and Indians. And he tried to defeat the Spanish, but they defeated him easily. Um, later on, this guy, uh, this next guy, Augustine de Iturbide, leads Mexico to independence with the same group. The mestizos and the Indians overthrow the Spanish, and they gain their independence. Later on, they have to earn it again against the French. So this guy, uh, very important, especially when we talk about Latin America in the 19th century and our future units of imperialism. But I wanted to introduce them now. Thank you. Bye.